My name is Outsider2522 and welcome to another Eidolon video. Today we're going to be looking at the Blood Berserker, but one particular aspect of his kit, which is cooking. Let's discuss how we turn this unit into our cooking slave. Okay, before I get started, just a reminder, please like, share and subscribe. All right, I wanna make this channel grow. I wanna get this information out to the masses. The only way I can do that is with your help. It's really appreciated. Okay, so cooking slave might sound a bit derogatory, but that is kind of the best thing for the Blood Berserker to be doing, is getting ladles and unlocking higher mills. The reason for this is that later on you're going to need millions of hours worth of cooking time to be able to unlock everything. The, it scales astronomically, and the only way to combat that is by making your Blood Berserker work in a particular way. So, the Blood Berserker's main skill when you unlock it in World 4 is cooking. Cooking goes hand in hand with uh, pets so you will need a beast master to be able to help you get your spices but we'll get into that in a different video so one of the first things you're going to look to do is um the way that the blood berserker was set up was originally there was a thing called apocalypse zao which is when you're a warrior and what this does is for every hundred thousand kills it increases your damage the the blood berserker takes it one step further so for every million kills, you can use a skill called Apocalypse Chow. And what this does is it increases efficiency. That's the main part. It also increases XP, but we're not too worried about XP at this point. So mainly the big thing is it's going to increase your efficiency. And what that's going to do is it's going to mean you'll get more ladles per hour while you're cooking. Again, you're going to need thousands upon thousands of ladles in late game. So this is really, really important. Now. One of the key takeaways with this, with the new Void Walker that was released, uh, which is obviously the most recent class, is that you can upgrade certain skills. Now, with the upgrade, you can unlock something called Super Chows. And how this works is for every 100 million kills on a unit, you will get increased cooking speed. Now, this increased cooking speed starts off very small. So for the first enemy you kill, it's a 0.1 times cooking speed. However, it's multiplicative. So what ends up happening is, rather than by the time you reach 27 um, Super Chows, it being 0.27, it ends up being something like 9 times. Okay, This stacks up massively, and means that you really want to be killing 100 million enemies. Now, personally I used candy on this. I had an abundance of candy. Um, you've, if you've seen my previous videos, Blood Berserker isn't great active, so you kind of want to do everything AFK. So I candied my way through a lot of this. Also, if you do want to find out what you have um, super chowed, chowed, zowed, without looking too deep, um, Eidolon Tools does have a great tool for it. If you go under Account and then you go under Apocalypses, you'll actually see a full list of what you've achieved. Um, so it's a really, really handy tool to have and it helps you to keep track of any enemies that you may need. Remember the rift is included in this and sometimes it's easier to get this done earlier because the rift monsters health scales massive Okay, let's look at more skills. So we then have waiting to call what this does very very simply is it increases the afk gain while cooking which means more ladles and Next we have overflowing ladles What this does is for every time you use a ladle in essence It should do one hour's worth of cooking as you increase this your ladles will do more out more time per ladle now, this might not seem like a huge difference, but obviously where you need thousands, if not tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of ladles, that buff is going to save you a significant amount of ladles. So highly recommend focusing on this, all right, when you're doing your cooking. Next, we have a few pieces of gear that your, your chef can uh, equip. So the first one's going to be cookie clogs, and you actually get this from Purple Mushrooms, the first mob in World 4. Very, very simple to get hold of. Now, these can be upgraded to chef hat shoes, and you do that using the cooking clogs and a lustre shoe. Now, lustre shoes can be a little bit expensive for new players, but the upgrade is worth it because, again, cooking is a very, very hard skill to get more um, efficiency in, so everywhere you can is great. The next thing you're going to aim for is the chef ring, a chef ring and that drops from chockies. Okay, now these are about halfway through World 4, so a little bit further into the world, but still a relatively easy drop to get hold of. You're going to need two of these. 
So make sure you farm enough, okay? And that's kind of where you're gonna be for your equipment. So there isn't a lot else. Obviously anything that's gonna increase your strength is gonna help slightly because strength affects efficiency for all of the warrior style skills, but it's not a huge benefit. So, you know, try and scale that where you can, but these are your main sources. So next we're gonna look at alchemy. Alchemy has a very, very interesting um, bubble that was really top tier for a long time. It's kind of gone down the listings nowadays because we've got, we've got new buffs coming. But it's called Diamond Chef. And what this will do is it will give you more cooking speed for every meal you have at level 11. Now, level 11 isn't too hard of a, ta a task to reach, um, even quite early game, until you get to the high recipes, so your sausages might be a bit harder to get, but early game this is a relatively easy one. This bubble scale is great to begin with, but once you reach, I think it's around about 50, the scaling is horrible. So uh, what you tend to do is you're going to put blue dust into it. Um, once you uh, salt, sorry, blue salt into it, which will help increase it. Once you reach a certain level, you're kind of going to stop leveling it. All right. And at that point, you're going to level it a different way, which I'll explain in a minute. <clears throat> the other bubble you want is prowessery. And what this does is it lowers the efficiency needed to get a multi bonus. Great, because that's going to mean that we need lower efficiency to get more labels. Okay, so definitely don't sleep on that bubble either. Now, Diamond Chef, I said you're going to want to level it up until a certain point, and then at that point, it's going to get so expensive on blue salts, and you're going to use blue salts for other things that you're probably not going to want to spend it. At that point, we're going to turn to the lab. Okay, and the lab has a. Um, has a jewel in it called No Bubble Left Behind. What this does is your three lowest alchemy bubbles get upgraded by um, two levels every single day. Or is it one? No, one level every single day. Now, you can upgrade this by getting the uh, Pyrite Rhinestone Jewel and it will now do four bubbles a day. And it will do two levels. If you get the Amberite Artifact from World 5, you get an extra bubble per day. So with that, you can increase it even further. Now, the problem with this is no bubble left behind will only do the first 15 bubbles in any particular branch. So this is in the yellow branch. You're gonna to wanna to increase the diamond chef and no bubble left behind at 15 doesn't is too low for that. So you kinda of need to get the atom collider in world three, which is linked to construction. Now you can see all of a sudden, to increase our cooking, we need to incorporate lab, construction, cooking, and void walker skills. All right, so there, there's quite a few things going on here to, to match them up. With the lithium atom unlocked, you have a 15% chance that it will upgrade a skill that's outside of the first 15 skills. Now, this means that you can actually increase your diamond chef and prowessery without using any um, any of your resources. This will become less necessary because later on you'll be able to upgrade it again, Diamond Chef using just atoms, but that's a different skill again. Okay, so the way you're gonna increase that bubble is through different means as it upgrades, depending on the cost. That's kind of where we're gonna go with, with that. So that's, that's how the lab's gonna work with it and everything else. Now, the other thing in the lab is that you can equip chips and there's a few that are going to help so one of them is the conductive processor this is going to give you 15 percent afk gains again more afk gains means more ladles great the next one you kind of going to go with whatever one you can get which is galvanic motherboard and galvanic processor now you can stack these and they both give base of base efficiency one gives a flat number one gives a percentage so depending on your use case one will be better than the other However, as we know with chips, unless you're buying them through the gamble system, you're going to have to wait a long time. So you might just have one of each. You might have a couple of one, one or the other. Use what you've got. Okay, again, that's going to increase your efficiency. That's more ladles. The last two are the two which you're going to use in almost every build, which is the Omega Nano chip, which doubles the card in your top left, and the Omega Motherboard, which doubles the card in your bottom right slot. These are super important for almost every single build you're going to use. And it's no different when it comes to cooking. Okay, so what cards are you going to do with the nano chip and the motherboard? For me, one of them is going to be Chaotic Troll. It just gives it a massive efficiency buff. Very, very good for skilling. And the other one is going to be the Amarok card. 
Reason is, it gives skilling AFK gains. Again, you've got to double that, you're going to get more ladles. Well, quite simple when it comes to cards. Anything else you're going to use on cards, there is a... Is it the... Is it the mutated mush has uh, cooking XP if you want to run it. Otherwise, you're just going to try and stack as much strength as you can in there. So, next we're going to go on to the crates you can unlock in World 2 through the Postal Service. And... There's two of them that are going to be use, really useful. So one of them is the chef's crate. This is going to increase your cooking efficiency, increase your cooking XP, and it gives you a chance to get two times ladle drop. Okay? This is huge because, again, you're going to need thousands upon thousands of ladles. So the more ladles you can get, the better. The other one which you might want to focus on is Myriad crate. Now, this crate is very strange because it goes up to like 10,000, which is way higher than any other crate. I would not recommend focusing on this crate, purely because the gains from it are relatively low for the cost. However, this crate will increase your base efficiency, so you may want to put some points into it. I've done 400 myself, because every crate, every other crate pretty much caps at 400, so I just put all of them at 400, and then I've kind of forgotten about this crate. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is your actual kitchens. You can upgrade them using spices. Now. You're going to need to do this for your um, for your Diamond Chef anyway, uh, because then you'll be able to get your foods cooked quicker, which means you're going to unlock that ability quicker. Okay, so this is kind of the early game way to increase your cooking speed. And this comes down to spices being unlocked with your Beastmaster again. So kind of relying on your um, Beastmaster, but as you unlock spices and you buy more kitchens, kitchens are kind of expensive for new players. Um, you can you can upgrade the spices. There is also a buyable in the upgrade shop that upgrades your kitchens and gives quicker cooking speed. However, that's for premium currency, so that's up to you whether that is worthwhile depending on where you are and how quickly you can farm premium currency. The final thing to look at to increase your bonuses is really stamps. And there's three that stand out in this category. So the first one is the multi-tool stamp. This is unlocked in World 5. And this is kind of used again for most skills because it just gives you a huge base skill efficiency. All right, really, really good stamp. It's expensive on your coins, but at the same time, it's giving you a buff to all, all skills for every single character. So it's a really, really huge stat buff. Next is the ladle stamp. <clears throat> this is going to increase your cooking efficiency, which again means more ladles. And the final one is the cooked meal stamp. Now what this does is it increases your cooking speed. This is also going to help with that cooking speed, you know, getting your, getting more value per ladle, so it's a good buff to have. There is also another buff in the Atom Collider called Fluoride, and what this is going to do is it's going to multiply your cooking speed for every meal at level 30. Now, this is obviously more towards the end game because you're going to have to reach all your meals to level 30. However, this can give you a huge buff on top of your um, cooking speed so all of these things are going to start snowballing together and you're going to start seeing what what kind of ends up on the game as one to the e which is basically one with the number after e is how many o's you've got okay cooking can get mad at cooking speeds also in the lab you've got the amethyst rhinestone and the emerald pyronite now these are also going to increase your mill cooking speed the Amethyst is um, just a straightforward faster. However, if you unlock all purple jewels, you will get it. It will do. It will double up and give you a double cooking speed. The uh, Emerald Pyrite increases for every upgrade across all kitchens. So remember, I said you need to upgrade your kitchens. This is going to help buff this one. There's another artifact in World Five called the Triangular Artifact. This one works a bit different because what it does is it increases your cooking speed based around the number of turkeys owned. Now, you're going to be using turkeys to upgrade your damage on the very first meal. However, what you might want to do, and a piece of advice given to me by uh, Alliance members, is however much you need to upgrade your turkeys, have three times that amount stockpiled to try and make sure you're getting the must out of this artifact. There's also a World 4 achievement called Cabbage Patch. What you need to do is you need to have five kitchens, so it gets a little bit expensive. You need to make sure you've bought five kitchens and they all need to be cooking cabbages. If they're doing this, you will get an extra 10% meal cooking speed, 
it doesn't sound like a huge amount, but every little helps. Now, one of the things I haven't mentioned yet is actually the stuff you can get from the cooking skill itself. Now, in there you've got eggs, corn dogs, uh, soda and double cherry. All of these will increase your meal cooking speed. So all of those are worth upgrading. Now the cabbage is a bit of a different one. And what this does is it increase your cooking speed per 10 levels of kitchen upgrades. So remember when I said do your kitchen upgrades, here's another reason why. In the alchemy vials, there is a vial called the Dreadnog vial, which is done using Dreadlow bars. So kind of end game, kind of expensive. This will also increase your cooking speed. Now the good thing about this is with Vial Mastery you can unlock through uh, the Rift. For every other vial that you've got at level 13, some of them are very quick and easy to get, like the World ones and the Log ones for example, it will automatically buff this. So although it starts at 3% to begin with, it doesn't necessarily end at 3%. It can go much, much higher. As well as that, there's another one called Long Island Iced Tea. And what this is going to do is it's going to increase your cooking speed again. Okay. And basically with these things put together, we're suddenly getting a lot of cooking speed. So all of this is a bonus. And again, because this is done on a vial, you will be able to upgrade this with other level 13 vials, which means that although it starts off with 6% mil cooking speed, it actually goes much higher. Now I think we're basically at the point where there isn't really a lot else you can do on your Blood Berserker to increase your cooking. However, there is one more thing you can do with your Void Walker. The Void Walker has an ability called Blood Marrow. And what this does is it gives multiplicative meal cooking speed. Okay? And it's based around the total level of meals that you've upgraded. So again, the more the quicker you build these meals, the quicker the bonus. This scales massive. With my setup at the minute, and I think it's at level 224, I get 20.9 million times cooking speed. Do not sleep on this skill. Okay, as I've said in a previous video, the Void Walker becomes the best support class there is because he's just going to make your other classes do better. That's kind of all the information I've got for you on cooking. Now, if you found this video useful or entertaining in any way, shape or form, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. It really helps the channel to grow. Until next time, you've been amazing. Take care.